Bug Kitties! <laughs> Welcome to Alan Moore's Porch, Episode 9. I am Rocky Turner, and it is my privilege to introduce to you... What can I say that hadn't been already been said? He's a bad motherfucker and he knows Kung Fu! <laughs> Mr. Justin Partridge! He, he did a sign. He did a high kick. I played. I played God, and I got too close to the sun. You do not uh, have the that, body of. I paid for uh, it. You do not have the body of Black Dynamite. I have the body of like a maybe a thirteen-year-old girl. You, I think maybe you, like a pudgy thirteen-year-old girl. Like the girl maybe. that kept going out for a drill team, but she never got in. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. She couldn't quite get that leg kick up high enough. The the you know, the chick that keeps trying out for cheerleader, and then they hey, just no, give no, her no, a that flag. That super hot now, so <laughs> like they give her a flag and be like, "Let's well, just do that. We're yeah. fine." Hi, everybody. Hell of a program we've got for you tonight. Uh, thank you for coming. Good. Thank you for coming out. Uh, we really appreciate you. Big news today. Uh, really big news happened today. Um, uh, Wonder Woman got cast. Got cast. Yeah, Wonder Woman. Like Wonder Woman. Yeah, Wonder yep. Woman got cast in, in Batman and Batman versus Superman. Uh, uh, Black Harder, I think, is going to be the the <laughs> title of that. Uh, it's Gal Gadot. From the Fast and the Furious Fast movies? And the Furious I was going to say Gal Gadot, but that sounds a lot like Dolguk Dukat from Deep Space Nine, wow. which would be an incredible Wonder Woman. Just a card, like a weird Cardassian. Uh, just looking. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. motherfuckers don't know DS9. Philistines. I don't, um, <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, I mean, I've seen her and she looks decent. She's a hard ass bitch. So, I mean, I think she'll, she'll do a good job. My whole thing is that I don't want. I hate. What, what I, is she gonna do? More Fast and the Furious movies? Oh! oh! Good night, everybody. That's our show. <laughs> oh man, that was great. Oh uh, god. Um, no, I'm. Oh uh, my! Did you see where someone thought that he was killed by the Illuminati? <laughs> that is no bullshit. No bullshit. Someone there was there's like a long thread because his on, name was apparently on the top of their list. Oh, what? Yeah, Paul Walker. Illuminati's like, like oh, we gotta get this one. God damn it! Obama's no. too secure. <laughs> He's Richard moved. Not- these movies Richard are Carter's on his way out. We need to get. God damn it! No, I don't. Um, I believe hacked with the devil. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the Wonder Woman thing. Mainly yeah. because I. If Adam Levine drops dead in a couple of years, then I'll believe you're you're mm-hmm. packed with the devil. I honestly <laughs> believe that. Well, um, he that's sold what us. I think what happened to Adam Levine Lander. sold his Adam, uh, yeah, I think Adam he Levine sold his soul, soul to the devil. He's he's the band that they make fun of in Jennifer's body. Like that's more, really that no, I don't fucking know for sure. <laughs> like your Diablo Cody, like you take off your mat mask <laughs> and your Diablo <laughs> Cody. Hey guys, snoochie boochies. I don't know what <laughs> she's. <laughs> saying. I don't know um, my but Wonder Woman. I I'm I don't. No, if I want her playing third banana to two dudes. I, I didn't. I didn't like the fact because when I read it, I was like, "Oh, cool! They cast Wonder Woman." And I was like, she's "This gonna just be, feels she's like gonna be in another uh, another heroes movie that already has another hero in it." And it just feels like DC is just getting to the point where we're like, we've got to fucking throw them a bone. Like, we've got to get them to shut the fuck up about this Wonder Woman thing. If, if we want to make this Justice League movie, we can't waste time. Oh, yeah, The these... Flash is going to be in the Batman-Superman movie, too. Yeah, because we can't, we got to introduce them all because we can't build a franchise out of each of them. Uh, they'll bankrupt us and they'll all just, be shitty. It really, so let's cram them all into one It movie. really sucks. I... Force of- Force a franchise I, down their throat. I am, I am cautiously optimistic because I, I am a big Wonder Woman fan, and it's about fucking time that we got a Wonder Woman movie uh, or some sort of uh, – because, like, uh, catch. I saw Catching Fire. Has anybody seen Catching Fire in here? Yeah. It's fucking great. It was really goddamn good. It's really goddamn good. And, like, the, the dudes are incidental in that movie. And it's great. Like, it's really, really good. And it, it I, I love the fact that it's making fucking – ridiculous money so like the suits in hollywood are like oh uh no no one goes and watches female driven movies or or uh movies with black main characters and the two biggest movies um of the last couple of weekends have been catching fire and that best man holiday movie with tay diggs you know it's a sequel to a movie best man that's yeah. that's a sequel to a, that's a that's a sequel to a movie that came out 
14 years ago? You, hey, you, you lost it. You lost all the girls when you said Tay Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> they just started drooling. Yeah, it's just like we need we need to provide like Red Lobster bibs. <laughs> if we're going to mention Tay Diggs, it's getting it, thick we, in at here. Least owe it, we at least owe them that. Because <laughs> right, uh, he's the perfect looking man. Thank you. He is. He's very, he's he's, very, he's, he's he's very good looking. Attractive. I'm a comfortably heterosexual man, and I can admit that dude is fine. Yeah. Terrence, how, I used to think. And he's like not aging at all. Like he's. Oh, uh, no. Michael Ely. Michael Ely on, on Almost Human is a that but dude's he's lickable. Like he's like he yeah he's 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 good he's a good looking dude. Um, <laughs> wow this this took a turn. Uh, it was great. Say, we were talking about Wonder Woman. And we just started just jerking our dicks over we Tay Diggs for ten minutes. We haven't even brought up the main. Um, yeah, um, we're here. Uh, we'll let's go ahead and barrel through our shout outs we do at the beginning of the show. Um, but I've also started to realize that I've failed as a host. Because I never mentioned the fact that we have shit that you can subscribe to until the very end of the show <laughs> when people have turned this bullshit off. Yeah. They've already they've already grown tired of our of our tomfoolery. Fish sticks are done. Yeah, Come they on. they've started doing something completely different. So you can find us on <laughs> Twitter uh, at Alan Moore's Porch. Uh, we also uh, our YouTube channel. If you just go on YouTube and search Alan Moore's Porch, you can subscribe to our channel, which has all of our past episodes plus. Uh, the newest episodes, please comment, like, share. Um, Post hateful comments, we don't care. Oh God, I want them so I bad. Them. I want them so well, bad. I, There's I, a guy. Get a, we would probably get a lot of haters if I posted the actual video of us. Is, <laughs> there is a guy now that I, now that I work for Newsarama. There is one guy that fucking hates me <laughs> as a person because I'm the new, I'm the new guy I'm like oh, the greenhorn and great. he fucking cannot stand that's me awesome, and it? I knuckle up to him all the fucking time my boss is like you're not really supposed to really give them any fuel or anything else like that guy can go fuck himself he's like the only human contact he's had is his mother when he brings down fuck when she brings down fucking bagel bites so i'm taking that guy like i don't know why that's the flag i'm planting that i want this pimply, he, i want this pimply asshole to to know how how fucking hardcore i am um uh, but going in our partners and podcast uh between the panels you can find them at uh between the panels uh, slash Facebook. You can also find them on Twitter at BTPcast or at their uh, straight website, uh, betweenthepanels.com. I just recorded an episode of, uh, with them about uh, the new crop of image comics that are coming up that are really great. Uh, Off Topical Pod, you can find them at uh, Off Topical Pod on Twitter, also on Facebook at um, Off Topical slash Facebook, and they have a website as well, 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 offtopical.com. What's up? We scratched their backs. They never scratch ours? No. They've never mentioned us once. Well, they have mentioned us, but they keep they they think they're super funny, so they give us like the last the last like parody. Na- par- nice, thank you. That's, That's right. someone has just subscribed to our YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, pop the fucking bubbly, we're legit. <laughs> um, uh, it's, we got one. <laughs> ah, even better, we got one. <laughs> um, they they keep giving us like funny, I, and I'm using funny loosely. The, I think the last one that they did was um, Candace Bergen's tits, right? Yeah, that's that. Sh- that should tell them something. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, that show went off oh, the, the air tw- twelve years ago. Oh, that show the- went off the air. Um, but yeah, you can find them on the internet. Um, Candace Bergen, we're talking about Candace Bergen. Candace Bergen, you, you should find really her. Look into Murphy Brown, it's a super funny show. Um, and I also uh, now I work for Newsarama.com. Uh, on their best shots column, I have stuff that comes out every Monday, every Wednesday, and every Thursday. Plus, uh, sometimes Tuesdays if I get a bug up my ass and want to do an advanced review. So uh, you can find them on Facebook at uh, newsarama.com slash Facebook or at their website, newsarama.com, and at Twitter at newsarama. All right. God damn, you got that out of here. I know, right? I have to take a bump or something. Okay. I need to get... <laughs> So I'll I'll do I've got I've got a couple of shout outs. Oh your offerings, yeah, bring them on. Offering. I've got one that I know, I mean we can both talk about it. Uh Alan Moore's crazy. Has anybody Oh yeah, I forgot has, about this. Has anybody heard this lately? Yeah. yeah. Alan Moore is really Al, Al, fucking Alan, nuts. Alan Moore just popped up in the news again saying he's basically disgusted with what comics has comics have become. And yeah. what comic movies have become. And he says that he's he's Taking the thing that well, you know, these were 
originally intended for children, and now, you know, you see like 30, 40, 50 year old guys going, and <clears throat> like I sat there, and then like it showed a whole bunch of people in the comments just bitching and bitching and bitching about it, and I was like, that's Alan Moore, that's, I mean, he's crazy. <laughs> you fucking, you tap he's, on that stump, he's, he's a, gonna give you what you get. I mean, like, he's a <laughs> lunatic that just so happened to write comics. <laughs> and that's the thing is that people, people always get really pissed off about it, but, like, he, this is his shtick. Like, every, every, like, six months, somebody will say his name into a mirror three times, and he, and he <laughs> just, he'll, he'll show up, he'll show up in their fucking apartment and go, like, oh, there's no way you, you should be reading fucking comics anymore. And then he'll poof in a, in a giant cloud of sulfur, and then it becomes this big news item. Like when, I when when is it going to be the point? When I don't understand when when bloggers are going to get to the point where they just realize that everything out of his mouth is going to be crazy. nuts. Absolutely, well, it's kind of like it's kind of like when people get weirded out by how weird Harrison Ford is too. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know how weird Harrison Ford was. I didn't either. And now that I and now that I found out, every time I look at him, I'm like, oh, you're just. You're just along for the ride, aren't you? Just... <laughs> His interviews are the You're... fucking best interviews ever. You saw? Did you see he was on Conan here lately? Maybe. He was on Conan, and Conan was like, I have $1,000 in my pocket if you'll tell me anything about the prequel. Oh, the new, the new Star Wars or movies? Or the, the, the new sequel. He's like, I'll pay. And he pulls it out, and he's like, look. He's like, this is not... He's like, this is actually, he's like, this isn't play money. This is $1,000 that I got out of Andy's dressing room. <laughs> and he's like, I will give it to you if you tell me anything about the new movies. And he's sitting there, and everybody's just fucking losing it. And he's like. Takes the money. He takes the money, and he's like. A long time ago. <laughs> in a galaxy very far away. <laughs> And then, like, everybody starts laughing. He was like, it was far, far away. He's like, was it far, far away? <laughs> and he's like, it was, it was, he was like, trust me. He was like, it was a long, long time ago. <laughs> I was like, and then, like, everybody's laughing. And, like, they're going to go to commercial break. And Conan's like, hey, can I get that? And he's like, I'm not going to get that money back, are you? He's like, no. <laughs> I did see last time he was on Conan, they did a, he did a bit where he was like, you know, you point a lot in your movies. And he was like, yeah, I, I guess I do. And he's like, we have made a super cut of you pointing in movies. And it's like four minutes of just bits from his movies just fucking just pointing at people. Like, that's his that's his go-to. That's his go-to. And then anything he acts is like him in the future. like, you find my wife. Now you have to find my wife. And I'm pointing for the... This is not a good bit for a podcast. I don't know why I, don't know why I decided to do, to do this next, bit. That's, next that's, up, the world's greatest mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he great? Uh, do you got any more, buddy? Uh, oh, and I've got this uh, Rick and Morty. Oh, God damn it! I was going to talk about Rick and Morty. Too. Well, I mean, uh, that's, yeah. I figured it would be a uniform. Old. Has, okay, has anybody here seen Rick and Morty? It just premiered. It just premiered on Monday. It's a new Adult Swim show uh, from Dan Harmon, the guy that created Community, and Justin Roiland, uh, the guy who is the voice of. The Earl of Lemon Grab. Lemon, Lemon. Yeah, Lemon, Lemon Garb. Is it Lemon Garb? Grab. grab Lemon Grab. Yeah. Uh, he's, yeah, he's the voice He's the voice of Lemon Grab on um, Adventure Time. It, it's a completely insane co um, cartoon. It's about this sci super scientist, this alcoholic super scientist, and his dumb grandson. And they just go on adventures, like the first it's Back to the Future soaked in gin. Because it's the 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 original the original concept was Justin Roiland used to just do he would get drunk and do bits as Doc and Marty, and it would just be him yelling at Marty about all the science shit that they've got to do, and they made a show about it. Like the first episode revolves around Rick. Is keeps taking Morty out of school so they can go on adventures, and they 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 go to this alien dimension so Rick can get these seeds from this mega tree, which is a direct quote from the show. Mega, it's a mega me, tree. Mega seeds from the mega tree. That's the kind of show you're getting into. And he makes Rick or he makes Morty smuggle them through intergalactic customs up his ass. <laughs> uh, it's fucking hysterical, and it looks. Beautiful, like it's a really yeah, good-looking cartoon. Really well animated. Uh, no, I, yeah, I was definitely going to talk about Rick and Morty, but it's on Mondays. Uh, Mondays at ten. Uh, the pilot 
is on YouTube right now. Uh, it, it's only going to be up for a couple weeks. If you get a chance to watch it, please fucking do because it's very, very funny. Do you have any more? Because I can just burn through mine real quick because uh, I've just got a couple comics. Go right ahead. Um, a, a couple of of note releases that came out today. Inhumanity number one, which is the new uh, spanning out of the events of Infinity. Uh, Matt Fraction and Oliver Coppell are doing this big um, Inhumanity event, which then. God damn it, events. God, I'm just. I'm, I'm excited about it because I like Fraction, and I think he has an injunction against me at this point because I talk about him so fucking much. Uh, he writes good comics. Uh, maybe he should start sucking, and then I'll stop. I'll stop talking about him. Uh, ver- this is rare. I have two DC. Holden Caulfield. I have God. two. I have two DC comics. What? Of no. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? I was just as shocked as you people. Uh, action, action. You com- people. Yes. These, what do you mean, you people? I'm very racist. <laughs> um, uh, these uh, um, action comics number twenty six and Batman Superman number six, both written by Greg Pak, uh, who is single handedly. Uh, well, not single-handedly there. It's like him, Jeff Lemire, and Scott Snyder are keeping the DC Universe readable. Um, and he just took over He just took over Action Comics, which is just a straight Superman story. And Batman versus, and Batman Superman is a, is a team-up title that's actually really great. Um, and Iron Man number 19 uh, came out today. It's the second part of the Iron Metropolitan story arc where Iron Man is building the city of the future. Written by Kieran Gillen. I haven't read it yet, but I'm. I, I really like his Iron Man. That's one of the main reasons I. I. I really don't pay attention to social networks anymore, is because everybody hates his Iron Man for some reason. All right, that's 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 all that shit done. Let's get to the meat. Let's okay. get to. Let's, oh, all right, wait, all right. oh shit! All right. No, 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 no. I mean, this is this this has to deal with the meat. <laughs> dick. He just whips well, his dick out and yeah, just I'm, just puts I'm it on the table. Smear, I'm smearing it across the table. <laughs> Wait, should we bring up our guest first before we talk about this, or do you just want to launch into it real quick? No, 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 no. no. This isn't a. This isn't a, a. thing. This is just me. I'm. I'm just gonna warn the people listening. Oh, got you. <laughs> and the people in the audience. Our vast, there are, expansive audience. There, the following presentation is super spoiler heavy. Oh yeah, yeah. We're so gonna if spoil you the have fuck not seen the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who and you do want to see it, don't leave for God's sakes because we need to buy. Well, it would be so here. fucking funny if every single one of them just <laughs> just <laughs> whoop, well, I guess like this is one it. fucking hive mind like, like just, just get up like if, a if, if you're if you're listening, pause us, go and watch it, and then come back, and you'll you'll get to delight in all of our uh, witty banter and <laughs> viewpoints. But I, I was like, I don't want to like just people like, oh, Doctor Who, oh my God, they just, they just told. And we everything. tell everything about it. Yeah, spread you, everything out on the table. You put a sound bite in with the spoilers, sweetie. <laughs> okay. Spoilers. I, <laughs> I cannot stand River Song. Spoilers. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Spoilers. That's that's a thing. Uh, that's a thing. We're gonna talk about it. I've got it on here. Um, uh, our guest, okay. our guest tonight, um, it's, he's, uh, he's a guy that I met doing, um, uh, Little Shop of Horrors, uh, he was our, he was the plant, he, he was our, he was our plant, he, no, he was our plant puppeteer, he was, okay, he cool. was fucking great at it, um, I always felt really, I, I always thought I was gonna, like, kick him in the nuts every time I got ate by the plant, but I, I didn't, <laughs> oh, did I? Oh, I thought you said, good, oh, <laughs> I thought you said you were gonna kick him in the nuts every time you got <laughs> like, I just made a point to just fucking, just right in the mommy daddy button. <laughs> Um, uh, but uh, he's uh, he's fellow Hoovian. Uh, he's a great guy to talk to. If you'll put your hands together for Mr. Brandon Irwin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here it comes in, just brand- brandishing a screwdriver. Just uh, constant noise. Oh. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. How are you oh, guys? Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being on the show, buddy. Really no appreciate problem. it. Anytime. I'm going to set this on the ground. Actually. Um. Yeah, yeah, do, do whatever you want, man. Later. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so they had the doctor. Really great. It was fantastic. It was really, really good. Mm-hmm. I was very shocked. I, I was shocked for, for two reasons. One, that it was so good. Yeah. And two, that throughout like Twitter, when when after after I watched it, I, I kind of took to Twitter to kind of see everybody's reaction to it. And... Largely positive, which oh, yeah. is very, very rare yeah, because, when it comes to Doctor Who. I mean, Who. I'm just going to lay this down here. Stephen Moffat has just been sucking balls lately. I did not. Wow! Like, I did not. Coming like, out the gate with yeah, fire! 
Sure. I, Holy I, shit! I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of the of the last season mm -hmm. and, because it was so terrible. And I, <laughs> I, I haven't seen a lot a lot of the last season. And then I sat there and I was like, apparently I ain't missing much. No, oh, yeah. See, like, I the name of the doctor. That was lame. Yeah, I got told that, and I was like, I the, missed that. The part. last, the last episode of the season is very is is kind of a misfire, yeah. just because you you get the sense that with the structure of the season, which I did really enjoy, I liked the fact that it was just a lot of one off episodes before Amy and Rory exited, um, and I thought I thought their exit was very very well done. Uh, it was super fucking heart wrenching, and it was very scary. Yeah. Um, because like the the, the the Weeping Angels have now become the new Daleks. That just they're in every other episode, or Everybody's, like they're co we're constantly being told how scary they are. Everybody's bananas about them. Yeah, and I I like the Weeping Angels, but there needs to be a mo there needs to be like a little bit of a break to where you're reminding how scary they are. Don't fucking like I just see I see <laughs> I see I see I see like the the some of the non Hoovians in our in our uh, fucking audience just oh, oh it's, no there's a, there's a couple there's a couple more but she's just just really just mockingly going oh yes I I agree yes the Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> the der the derlicks. Um yeah. but no, now I I'm sorry, go ahead, buddy. No, so I I just I haven't enjoyed it uh, as of late. Like I really started off liking Matt Smith and then mm -hmm. it just became What are you doing? What happened? And then the River Song storyline that just kinda went <laughs> nowhere. I wanna go <laughs> I, what? I said I was, <laughs> that was incomprehensible. Yeah, that was, I was in English. I was talking. I was talking to my wife tonight, <laughs> and because I brought up that, and I was like, I, I was like, I think I figured out why. I was like, I was like, did Steve? And I and I asked her. We were eating at Wendy's, and I was like, did name drop? Um, <laughs> Humble brag. Uh, did we? Uh, I was like, did Stephen Moffat write Silence in the Library? Yeah, he wrote both those. The She's like, yes, he did, and I was like. And then he, I was like, because if it was t Davies, I would have just been like, see, Davies laid an egg and everybody yeah. had to deal with it. <laughs> but, but Stephen Boy, Moffat wrote this and then he had to, I was like, because I, I went, I started going back and watching classic Who episodes mm -hmm. and it's, here's a problem and here's how we fix it. Here's a problem, here's how we fix it. Instead of, here's a problem and this person you don't know yet but it's secretly your great grandfather um, that's traveling. This backwards. is the show, guys. The, yeah. the people, the people that haven't watched it. I just want to keep looking at their eyes glazing at the shit that that's we're traveling backwards through your own time stream. So you're just now meeting them, but they've known you their whole life, and like <laughs> that's just too, it. Just yeah, thank you. And it gets super convoluted, and you're like, "What the hell's happening? It's Inception." I'm glad somebody <laughs> else feels the same. Because I, I watched it and I was like, if they cut out all of River Song's crazy whiz biz, I'm River Song spoilers. <laughs> the impression that I, I really <laughs> wish we recorded this just because Brandon did the most amazing like dance yeah, with his impression. I like it. It's like a weird marionette yeah. thing. Uh, uh, the little uh, little uh, lollipop guild. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, no, I goodness. let's let's I I want to I want to kind of hit some high points of of day, of day of the Doctor and and starting with Night of the Doctor. Uh, Night of the Doctor. Oh, I only read about it. Oh, you haven't yeah, seen Night of the Doctor? No, Paul McGann. Right? Yeah, it's it was the it's a final. It's finally gave us the regeneration scene for eight. Yes. And that was always one of the that was always one of my because have you have you ever seen have either of you ever seen the TV show? Yes. Uh, the, no, the, the TV special was it like on Fox or whatever. The, yeah, the TV yeah. movie. Oh, I thought you. I thought you were talking about the that. show. <laughs> have you seen the show, Doctor Who? Show Doctor like Who? The, the show that we're talking about, Doctor Who. Have you yeah. seen it? It's great. Uh, no, Eric Roberts was the Masters. Yes. Yeah, that was great. Has any has any Whovians out here seen the TV movie? Uh, do it. If you haven't seen it, fucking do it because it is trash. It's not good. There's it a is, it wasn't picked up. It is yet. not good at all. Um, Paul McGann though is incredible. He's an amazing doctor, and I I haven't listened to any of his audio adventures because apparently they're really great too. But I, that was always my one of my big complaints with the new series is that they just kind of dropped. Eccleston into it as nine, and yeah. they're just like, well, there, there you go. This is the start of the show. Deal with it. And I, I mean, I enjoyed it because yeah, I like because, Eccleston. Yeah, because there wasn't really an introduction. He just sort of barged into a shopping mall. <laughs> Run, picked, yeah. up, picked up Billy Piper. That is like, one thing. Go. That is one thing that I will definitely give 
Davies, and I do I don't give him a lot of leeway. What, and really? I God, God we're, no. we're, that's a fucking point that Let's I've got on my that I've got on my pad, sir. Um, he picked up his lighting cues from the 1960s Batman lighting director. <laughs> There's nothing but it just I like I like the fact that he didn't throughout season one and and into into two and three. He very slyly kind of layered all the very time lordy shit into the show yeah. because the show very much starts as kind of a uh, like a very jaunty sci fi uh, adventure show, and it's not. It's it's got fifty plus years of of continuity behind it, and he's not trying to jam all of that into the first three hours. Does that make yeah. any sense? Yeah. Like he he doesn't even he doesn't men- he doesn't yeah, even mention he doesn't like. even mention Gallifrey until the second season. Uh, they barely say that he's a time lord until like uh, three yeah, and three know. episodes in when uh, the end of the world when the when the tree lady once again oh, yeah. this is the show guys. That's right. That's um, really there's a lord. there's a there's a lady that's a tree. Um, she yeah tree. she scans him and then and then they reveal that he's a time lord. But I I like the fact that he, that, he, that he very much took his time seeding a lot of the the the, the mythos into the new show. Yeah, because I think it was geared towards catching new people and I think that would have just been like oh totally and that was out. like Eccleston I count Eccleston as my doctor because huh. I didn't I I watched it on PBS as a kid and I had no idea what the fuck was going on <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me like it, sometimes it was a weird blonde guy and like sometimes it was a really tall guy with a scarf and he was always like fighting robots and like there was like a, blo- a box and I felt like I was on LSD <laughs> and I and it scared the was shit out of me I had Williams from Toys show <laughs> Oh, God. Um, uh, but then I, but then when in 2005, when when so when Sci-Fi picked it up, I I really dove back into it, and I, I it's it's my favorite show. I there there are shows that kind of come close to it, but I, I Doctor Who is always your constant it's, junior yeah. star. It's that it's there for me. Like it's it's more it it knows me better than my parents. Like it's uh, <laughs> when my when my parents uh, shut up. Like uh, uh, <laughs> that's because it's, it's true. <laughs> it's, uh, no, and like I, I don't want that to sound sappy, but no, Doctor Who has gotten me through a lot of really dark periods in Especially my life. Especially the Tenant episodes, they were very emo and like just um, I'm forever alone. I, I'm starting to kind of cool a little bit on Tenant. I'm not going to lie, guys, yeah. because yeah. Tenant's such a fucking crybaby. Whoa. He's crying Listen, all the hey. time. Every other Listen. episode, he's always just like, ah, blah, 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 and just like, come on, like he doesn't want to go. <laughs> That's that's, that's, one, that's one for the insiders. Um, and that was that was actually one of my the things that I loved about Day of the Doctor is that I was very hesitant going into it because I didn't want it to just be Tenet's back and it just being like like he just bulldozes everybody. Yeah. Which I'm glad it wasn't. Oh, not at all. And the the chemist <laughs> The chemistry between the three were incredible. Just seeing just seeing them on screen kind of bouncing off of each other was was really awesome. I thought so well. I thought it was I actually I really thought it was well written. Like I'm a big story person. Mm-hmm. Like if it doesn't make sense then this is shit. But mm-hmm. that's it was just a fantastic all around let's just get as many Easter eggs for Doctor Who fans as we can. Oh my make god. Make it make sense. I've got I've got, I've actually There's got, a like a list. <laughs> you have a I, list. I got it I got it written here and I was like uh, I was like, I think everybody knew that they were just, like, Stephen Moffat knew that he was kind of stepping on everybody's dick for the last season. <laughs> so he's literally just throwing out, he's literally throwing treats to the audience like, hey, here's a fucking scarf. Yeah, yeah. 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 The uh, op- opens with the original credits. brainy specs. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. opens with the original credits. Uh, it's... Uh, Tottingham Lane. It shows the school that that you miss, you miss Barbara Billy Piper, don't you? There she is, yeah, Barbara. Check her out. Barbara and Ian. Uh, the the school that Barbara and Ian taught at, and, and Ian Chesterson is the now the the headmaster of that show, of that school. It just I I was very I was very very pleased with it, and I I'm not I was. I want to say I don't want to say I was going in with low expectations, but there's I do. There was still with with, uh, with yeah. the, the the weakness of the season finale. I it just kind of felt like into the first Hobbit movie, like going like well I know there's two more movies after this, so there's really no ending. To, oh, it's yeah, just kind yeah. of dropping it. And I, I mean I like the first Hobbit movie, but it just you know there's two the there's two more fucking movies after it. Like you it's, that's that's what you bought a ticket for, and that's what the season finale felt like. It was just like this rush <laughs> build up to John Hurt. There's like we yeah. they, we've got we've got John. Heard at the very end of the episode, we've got to get to this. 
bullet train. Yeah, and it just like I, I don't know, but Day of the Doctor, I was very, I was very, very pleased. Maybe with. that's why just the last half of that season was just crap. It was just See, I like the last half of that season a lot more than I like the first half of the season. I like, I like the fact that um, that each episode is like a standalone movie. I like that. I like the fact that they went just balls nuts with some of their <laughs> stories because my my fiance is going to start watching it. But I was watching, I was watching an episode and she just kind of dropped in, and it was dinosaurs on a spaceship, <laughs> and she was she looked at she looked at the TV and was like, what the fuck is going on she was like this is the show that you're constantly fucking talking That's about what I said it's like he's watching. riding a triceratops and there's a beach on it and i was like well the, the beach is actually the engines of the spaceship she's like i don't fucking care i'm out I, I'm, I'm leaving yeah no that's how i felt i was a big, was a big who fan watching the episode like what the fuck <laughs> I, I see. Watch I, this anymore. I see that. That to me, I was like, "Yay, going back to wacky, wacky." Like, just- see, I do. I really enjoy when some when some stories, with with the exception of some stories that are just unwatchable, because yeah. um, <laughs> there are there are a couple of episodes that are just drivel. I cannot watch them. Which you know. I think that explain or not, goes to show how good the show is because there are episodes that are just like dudes. They're what the worst. This? Oh well, god, they're just love it. so bad. Um, like it's Doctor Who. It's the yeah, it's it's like pizza. Like I'm still yeah. gonna enjoy it. Um, one day you hate it, the next. It's the crazy. okay, let's let's touch on this because this, this is one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on the show. Oh god, because you're you're the rare. Uh, Russell T Davies apologist. You're you're a bigger fan of, of Russell T Davies. Yeah. Oh, for for the uninitiated, um, halfway through the show, or the the guy that the guy that brought the show back was a guy named Russell T Davies. Um, he's a very talented, capable writer. He did he created the 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 original Queers Folk. And it's amazing. Um, and really? he I yeah yeah he did the he did the original Queers Folk. Um, Queers. and he brought back oh. he brought back. <laughs> He brought back Doctor Who in 2005, and he was the showrunner until 2009. It was 2009. Thank you. Uh, until, yeah, until 2009, series five. It, it, wait, wait, wait. I just, I just had a brain. It came back in 2005. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Eccleston. Yeah, with Eccleston. That's, that's super aged. Um, uh, after I graduated from high school. Dude, uh, what up? Um, <laughs> we're all together. Um, uh, I, I was a sophomore. Oh. I think in high school. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh, Eat it, nerd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, it's, I oh, think I was even. The door. I think I was even oh, younger than that. I think because I, I graduated in two thousand. Were nursing? I think. You were yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was in the womb. He's stuck on um, his life. He was cutting but teeth. he he show ran he show ran until two thousand nine, and a guy took over by the name of Stephen Moffat, who um, by very very large uh, popular opinion <laughs> is the best writer on the show he was writing some of, he was writing the best episodes during the during yeah. the T Davies um, era and he's now taken over the show uh, with the regeneration from uh, the 10th doctor into the 11th doctor and now he has he's been running it and he's probably going to run it until they run it fucking the put it on the ground yeah. until so, um no Russell T Davies was great his episodes like i said they were very there was a lot more science. I don't know if that makes sense. There was it was like more like fake science, whatever you want to call it. Like Bada, whoa, blah, 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 blah. really? Yeah. I find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah thing to say. I find Annoying. it very, very. It's like mm, I statues. find it very hard to believe that you are a fan of the guy that wrote Love and Monsters. <laughs> like that episode is the Here. fucking worst. Can't, wait, refresh that, me. Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters is the first Doctor Light episode that they did. Was the it's the episode where the Doctor's barely in it, and it's about that fucking weird, creepy guy. From it's no, no, the, the I can't remember the actor's name. No questions from the that actors. The, the 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 it's the main actor's name, and his he had he had an encounter with the doctor when he was a kid, and he's really obsessed with finding the doctor, and then he falls in love with Luna Lovegood, and <laughs> they <laughs> they <laughs> fucking yeah, uh, um, uh, they form a little group, and they're trying to find the doctor, and an alien comes and starts to be their leader. And then he starts absorbing them all. Oh, that's right. That was a terrible episode. It's not good. That is not a good episode. But as we've already discussed, terrible episodes 
by the side, still make Doctor Who great. But he's show. the guy running the show. Like he's yeah, the but, boss. No one can tell him no. Steve no Mom one looks doing the exact same no thing one, with flashier stuff. No one looks at that script and go like, "You can't fucking put this on the air, Russell." It like, had you a can't start do, and a you finish. Can't, you can't do. <laughs> it what? had a start and a finish. It's sort of the Holocaust. It doesn't make it great, <laughs> but it makes it a story. <laughs> Hey, hey, count, count the Oscar Schindler's yeah. <laughs> Boom! Boom! <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that on a shirt! <laughs> but it makes it a story. It does. Uh, God damn it. Brandon, yeah, okay, that probably wasn't the best episode ever, but, I mean, come on, he brought you David Tennant, and everybody my, loves David Tennant. My, Hands down but i still okay i'm i'm cooling on him as a as the doctor well, that's I, fine i mean it's been a few years he's getting kind of and plus forgotten. i like the fact i like when the was doctor it, was it was it seeing him with that super weird creepy long hair for that richard the third <laughs> no i want to see his richard the third that kind of turned me off. <laughs> really? with the like weird like hair extensions to, like the middle of his yeah back. he it's, looks like a like a hair metal it. singer like it's it. weird like a retired hair metal like, <laughs> He's not at the top of his game. Like a cruise ship uh, he's poison like, he's, uh, cover what's, band. What's his name with uh, dreadlocks? Oh, Axel Rose. Axel Rose. Oh, <laughs> God. There's a person I can't see. Um, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I the my my whole thing with T Davies was that it Call felt that it sure. felt like yeah uh, <laughs> RTD. Um, when they hang out, when they hang out. God damn it! I want to punch myself in the dick. <laughs> um, uh, Licking young Puerto Rican boys. <laughs> yeah. Just writing scripts. Um, uh, I I just awesome felt like his years. I just felt like his his scripts were always very <sighs> slapdash. Like he's got he's got the central idea. He has no idea how to fucking wrap it up until the like, five, oh, five yeah, until oh, like the last yes, four yeah. pages of the script. I, I, I agree with that. And he's got to yeah. put a bow on it really rest, quick. Yeah, but I, the bows are pretty. No, no they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. They're pretty when you're looking at it through fanboy eyes. There you go. Motherfucker, you were preaching to the choir here. I know. I had nothing to come back with that. I, just, I was hoping you'd take it and that's let's like, just that's like, fuck that's it. That's like saying the, that's like saying the girl at the bar with three beer goggles is still going to be hot the next day. You're like, she just was a 10. Keep drinking. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. You're full of gins today. Yeah, like, hey, you're going to have you on the, the, the show more so you just coffee today? dispense this wisdom. <laughs> um, but I also, I also feel like because and this this is going to sound really shitty, but he's he's a huge he is a huge fan of the show. You can tell that he's a very, he's a very very big fan of the show. Yeah. That's why he wanted to bring it back. So he 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 knows how how it's important. And as a fan, I like the fact that we that we had a fan behind it. That being said, fan fiction. Fan fiction. I just I felt like he was writing fan fiction. Fan fiction. His his last well, episode, his his very the Donna's season finale the, the, is just everybody in the TARDIS hugging. And I don't give a shit at all. But, but Donna, come on! I mean, I do. Uh, Donna, yeah, Donna's, Donna's incredible. Mind. But did, I, did I just, it, they ever go to a club? Because apparently, in a lot of fan fictions, they go to a club. They go to clubs. Really? They go to clubs. clubs yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever read any Doctor Who fan fiction? Have either of you ever read, read Doctor Who fan fiction? fiction? Oh, oh, oh I, I, do it because oh, there's uh, a lot of things. dicking. I just uh, yeah, I, I heard things. There's yeah. a lot of dicking. I decided I did want to write some Doctor Who fan fiction, and it's focusing on uh, the three Doctors, the 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 special, the three Doctors, where all three of them have to come together and ten, eleven, and the War Doctor. Yeah, uh, no, 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 the OG. The OG? Yeah, yeah, the OG three Doctors. Oh, okay. one, two, and three. Yeah, one, two, and three. Oh, when, shit. Jo- when John Pertwee has to save the universe from being sucked into a black hole, yeah, and he gets his, and he gets the keys to his TARDIS back. No, <laughs> I want it because in that episode they pull like the galactic brain people or whatever. They pull. They <laughs> that's pull, that's well, I mean, verbatim what the yeah, enemies are called. Like, the galactic like, brain people. They look like a giant piece of chewed up bubble gum with ping pong balls stuck. Oh, the like axons. That's the, the axons. Yeah, yeah, they're the axons. And the uh, what was the name of the the main villain? He used to be a time lord. Master? No. Mad Monk? No. Time Meddler? No. <laughs> no, those these are real. <laughs> these are real. <laughs> like I'm just it's saying just like I'm just saying shit. It sounds like comic book <laughs> villains. It's, it's, it's the it's it's the guy that's in control. He he made it possible Rassilon. No, he made it possible for them to travel through time. Rassilon. That's not what they call it. It's Rassilon, isn't it? I don't I f- so. not Yes. Omega. Ome- Omega. 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 
Uh, yeah, they they miss the, they make it Omega. science fictiony, and they, they, they say, they say they, Omega. yeah, they say Omega really weird. Like, what the fuck? Is, it's Omega. Are they saying it weird because they're British or because they're science fictiony? Well, <laughs> probably, yeah, probably a little bit. I was like, I was like, okay, well, in that episode, I feel like a dick. I'm really sorry that I just kept yelling "Rassel on" at you, <laughs> like, <laughs> like just trying to browbeat, just, just, yeah, just, just trying to br- just say it, just yeah, just trying to browbeat you into that. I'm really they, sorry, they buddy. They take they take all of the Doctor and like all of his companions, and they take everybody who's ever. Looked at the doctor longer than a minute uh, in the in the episode to this to this black hole. Well, they also transport this gamekeeper, <laughs> this game warden, <laughs> and he's just hanging about with mud boots, walking around with a coat, <laughs> carrying a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> and at the end of the episode, they're like, "All right, we need you to step through that mist, and you'll go back to planet." And he's like, All right, "I'm not going back in there." <laughs> And so, like, the brigadier, he's like, oh, and he walks through, and he sees that nothing happened. So mm-hmm. he's like, and he kind of reluctantly kind of steps into it. And I think his name is Mr. Oswell. I want to do an episode where Mr. Oswell is the companion. <laughs> <laughs> and, he doesn't, and he doesn't go for any of that bullshit. He just sits at the tortoise while everybody else goes on adventures and guards it with a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> Like he, like he comes up with a he's thermos like, and a stool and just kind of hangs out. He's like, he's just you fucking win. guys go ahead. I'll he's just like, hang we, here. We've, we've got to stop the Dalek. They're about to con- uh, take control of the time sphere and ruin existence. Y'all go about your business. I'll stay, go on, he's like, I'll here. stay here. I'll stay here and watch It's like this. four chapters of just him smoking and just smoking, ruminating. Bitching and searching for... <laughs> And searching for gin inside the target. <laughs> a lot of internal monologue. Oh, really. God, I'd read the shit out of that. That's amazing. I was like, why is nobody touched this guy? Because they, they, they plop him back onto the planet, and he's like... And he just walks <laughs> off! And he's he the saunters, most agreeable he's, companion he's in the world. He saunters back to his wife, and his wife's like, where have you been? The supper's getting cold. The men from the military have been coming looking for you. Where have you been, brother? And she's just tearing him a new asshole. He's like, hush your mouth, woman. He's like, she's like, what, what, what happened? He's like, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. He's like, now fix supper. <laughs> and he's like, walks into the house. And I was like, yes. That's a man's man. I, need, a perfect I need to see the three doctors. I've yeah. never, that, that's one of the oh, only that's one of the only classic multi doctor stories I've never seen. Oh, I've seen so I've seen five doctors and two doctors, which is six and two. And you saw And it's the worst. Did you see did uh, you see two doctors, one cub? <laughs> <laughs> It, I, I, I'm, I'm just here to say that should not be as funny as it is. They, they play with the continuity of, of Doctor Who a lot. Take a lot of liberties. Oh yeah. man, there's a lot of things that could be in that cut. Two, two doctors, bad. one cut. Because I'm just imagining like foppish John Pertwee just oh. hunching oh. over, oh. Uh, just with his fucking ruffles and everything. Squeezing I'm out. quite spry for my old age. Whammo! He's not curry. <laughs> Peter Davidson using a celery. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. It's the spoon. It's the spoon. These are the jokes, assholes. See what's happened? Uh, uh, oh, oh God. God damn it! That Let's was look at great. Two levels. Uh, we we lost going it. down. Yeah. We just we lost everyone that was listening. We now. just no. We just won. <laughs> we just won the fandom. We be, we became the Lord. Side, we though. became the Lord Presidents of the Doctor Who fandom. <laughs> we um. Uh, is. Wait, weren't we talking about real things? <laughs> no, that's that's what we were talking about. That is what we were talking um, about. Maybe that'll be my next fan fiction after I write the uh, the two doctors one. Kind of, I'll, I'll write the, the I'll write the uh, the one with the 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 dingy old game warden just mm-hmm. shooting people that come near to the TARDIS. And then the next one will be two doctors. If you've cut. really never read any Doctor Who fan fiction, fucking I have, do I've only it. Told about it! Oh my god, do it! It's just like. Eight dicks in their ass like the tail of a peacock. There's so much fucking in those in those stories. Like it's barely a Doctor Who story. Just also it's known just, as time travel with dicks. Yeah, it's just and it's then just there like, was a triple like, penetration. Yeah, like the, the doctor the do- oh, doctor the doctor shows up on a planet, like he kinda mills around for a bit, Rory fucks him in the face, <laughs> the uh, the master just warps into just just and then just sticks fingers in his asshole. Like that's it. There's no story. <laughs> and then not dark. Not, are. not only that, but there's like 78 chapters of it. It always goes on for so long. Fiction writers are super happy. Yeah. They're <laughs> pouring it out. They love it. See, I've I've tried writing I've tried writing fan fiction and then actually like 
putting it online and no one reads it because I'm doing stories. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing like like the one the one that I really I poured a lot in I poured a lot of effort into it. Um and don't you fucking judge me because I already feel you doing it. Um I wrote it was a Doctor Who Fantastic Four crossover. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I had this big I had this huge story where the doctor was going to hang out with the Fantastic Four. Well yeah, probably. Um uh, cuz I, t- I talked about it a lot when He'll I was trying to I, like, I, I just anybody I, I was stopping fucking hobos on the street going like I'll buy you a fifth of Jack if you listen to my FF story. Um, um, it's, yeah, and they just spit in my face and walked off under an overpass. Um, but I I wrote like three four chapters of it. And I put it online and no one fucking read it because there was no semen in his face. No one cared. It's, Semen's a big deal online. Semen right? is a huge thing. That's 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 the that's selling online is that's the selling point of a lot of fan fiction. Come on, my glasses. I can confirm that. <laughs> Card carrying oh, member of come on my glasses. I, I, I got in on the ground floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a platinum member. Uh, do you think? Uh, let's. I'm. God damn it! I don't know where we Tangent. go. From. I don't either. Yeah, I don't know it's where happening. we go from this. Oh, what do you think? Do you think Gallif- the the search for Gallifrey is going to be the next no. big arc? I hope so. You don't? No. Really? They can't. They can't just do that. Well, I mean, he could. He he's been gone for so long. <laughs> that, but that's just it. Like, he's not going to, like... I just have the feeling that a, a part of him is... Moffat will do this. He'll plant the seed. It's like, he's kind of... He's looking at this thing too long. Maybe he's going to start looking for it. Oh, he's rifling through old out, uh, high school photos. <laughs> He's probably gonna start going back. Like the then doctor's like, high school photos are just a bunch of old people, and then like, like, like you like William Hartnell and a bunch of old assholes. And then like like, s- like six like six or seven episodes, like a season later, they're gonna be like, all right, now he's gonna go. So you don't think with Capaldi that that'll be that'll be the overreaching arc with Capaldi? I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong because I'm wrong about a lot of things. I just hope it is. I See, I think. Oh, no. What did that motherfucker just say? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that I think that's a really interesting. I because I I love I love the fact that from from the very beginning he was the last of his kind. I think I think that adds a um, is it pathos? Yeah, it, it's deep. It, it, it adds it adds a, a, a real a, a real emotional stake to it. I liked I liked the fact the that French he was, call it Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> I liked I liked the fact that he was that he that he was the last of his comfort. And it, it added it added a definite weight to to his actions and, and his existence. But I think the because those a lot of those seasons were just really dark yeah like it just it just kind of was just like oh he's so alone he's so sad well, he's the only one in the he's yeah and because uh, eccleston's the ptsd doctor oh, yeah. um 10 oh, is yeah. 10 is the doctor that's working through all of his issues and then 11 gives no fucks about yeah. it yeah. like he's like i'm an alien i'm getting into adventures and that's all i want to do Shenan. i got well, jenny I dodgers think- and i'm fucking fighting <laughs> dollars i think what it was yeah. though is that with 11 he had been to the waters of Mars. Like mm-hmm. he, was, he was starting to play God. He was getting way too dark. Yeah, yeah. And then he was like, God, "Waters of Mars is so fucking I good." I need to turn it back. I need to turn it back because I'm acting too Fish crazy. Yeah, right? and, and that's like, that's why that's trying, why I'm trying I think... to mask the fact that he's an emotional wreck underneath it. Oh yeah, and he's committed gen- and he's committed genocide a lot, <laughs> oh, <laughs> a yeah. couple of times. Yeah. Um, that's I think that's why I really liked Eleven so much is because I responded to the fact that it's. He's no longer the the dashing hero that Tin was, and he's just a weirdo. Yeah. He's a fucking psychopath. He's a lunatic. And Matt Smith looks goofy enough to. Pull oh that God, out. that chin! Like he looks like Rocky Dennis, which by the way, from uh, Mask. Saw that three like, D. His chin was just right. In face. <laughs> <laughs> just it's nothing but it's nothing but head. It's nothing but forehead and chin. Yeah. Uh, they even make a joke about it. I brought my, things, the 3D, I brought the my Thanksgiving thing. turkey up there and just had him carve it. Oh yeah. Um. Let's. Th- this is this is kind of general, but like what. What are, what are some of your standout favorite episodes of which of just any just just of the of the entire run like what's with the first the first couple episodes that you think of that oh well, I'll, I'll narrow it down a little bit more if you were to give a cut like one or two episodes to somebody who hadn't seen the show as a pitch what would you give to them uh, okay okay i know i'm trying to think of one that's like super <laughs> But that doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> like super happy. Like they all. And I was telling Chris, I was like, they never go 
They never go to an island and get to enjoy a sunset. A cotton candy planet or like some... Yeah, they never, like, because he's like, because, and, and they always talk about it. Oh, you're going to love this. This whole planet is full of pillow people. You can just sleep on... Oh, wait, everybody's here, everybody here is dying, uh, is being burned to death. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to stay here and solve this problem. What about the pillow planet? I'm going to I've been, away, I've been go awake for yeah. 72 hours. I yeah. need to get some naps. Yeah, companions always go with it, too. Like, I, also, oh, yeah, I love the fact shit. that he's constantly promising to take them to see, like, concerts and shit, and then they end up somewhere completely fucking yeah, like different, and, and people are dying left and right. And, nobody, and nobody's like, uh, Donna, I think, was the only one that was like, just go back. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, there was that episode, the uh, Midnight, where he was going across that planet, she was just hanging out in a spa. Oh, yeah, that's right. I want to see that episode. That that, awesome. that, that's a great episode where, like, the doctor is dealing you with, like... You want to see Donna hanging out in a spa for... Just, just like, for 40, 48 hours? That's 45 minutes, her going to the buffet, eating, like, shrimp cocktail, like, getting, like, weird, getting a massage. Weird, 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 blue, weird blue women bringing her, like, cucumber cocktails. <laughs> well, all the while, the doctor's dealing with horrific humanity like, on a bus. Like humanity trying to push him into never. Yes. That's okay, so... Very much the episode. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking dark. It is. It's like, hey, humanity, you're kind of an Let's asshole. Cap, I'm going to go with a dark episode, too. Let's cap it at two. Like, you have two okay. episodes. I'll, 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 I know a my... two-parter counts as one. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'd say, like, dark, because I want to do... And this one's really light, but it's... Honestly, it's the only one that ever made me cry, so I'll, I'll, I have to say it. The Vincent and the Doctor. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a good Vincent one. and the Doctor. I li- like, every episode, like, if it's a very tearful episode, like, I'll, I'll well up. And because, like, I was, I had it pushed down my throat when I was a child that only faggots cried. Like, I'm like, <laughs> 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 it's ringing. It's just I've watched Doctor Who with him. He slaps his own thigh a lot. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of there's a lot of sand in this room. That's, like, that's, 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 that's just a lot of sand in here. Can everybody else see the sand? <laughs> That like that made me like I honestly was just like because you're a big yeah and you're a big art guy too like that's what yeah, you went to school for I was, I was I was a super I was a super huge Vincent Van Gogh fan and then when you kids like Vincent Van Gogh died exactly how he died in the in the fucking show mm-hmm. he died like penniless everyone thought his art was shit yep. and he just decided hey I bet this gun can scratch the back of my throat <laughs> oh Jesus and it his brains out like that's like that's how the greatest painter that ever lived ended, and art. so and so you get to see the doctor, art. art, just fucking art, guys. Art. So you see, you see the doctor and Amy, bald, bald pirate, Amy. Um, what you mean, Bill Nighy? Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm, yeah, that's uh, yeah, Bill Amy, Anthony. Amy. Yeah. Yeah, she when, shaved her head now. She's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, she shaved her head. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now that yeah, I've yeah. seen that, it's burnt. <laughs> now it's now it's with everybody. Yeah, just, come on, stay, stay with yeah. us, guys. Collect, connect some dots. <laughs> well, no, he I was the fucking yeah, one stammering. It wasn't me. I was, I was completely spacing. No, because they took him to an art oh, gallery pirate. and literally showed him an entire room. Filled with everyone just worshiping his art. The guy acting Van Gogh brought it home, I think. Yeah, because like, really, him awesome. just turning around in circle, and then the, him going up to Bill Nighy and being like, "Hey, what do you think about Vincent Van Gogh as a painter?" And then he's like, "I mean, he's like the greatest painter ever." And like you just see him just melting. Yeah, he's just like, oh. very emotional. And I'm like, ah. I gotta get out of here. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm feelings, feelings. <laughs> okay, it's happening in my body. I will say that's. I'll say that's my. I'm glad I get to go first because I get to get like the bell. Like I yeah. get to grab the gym. Just, yeah. <laughs> but the other one I would have to say because like as a as a twenty something going in and watching this. I thought the Dalek looked like waste paper baskets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Upside down waste paper baskets with a plunger. A, 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 a plunger. I literally have a plunger and a laser gun. Like, there's nothing about that that's scary. I'd say there's, I, I feel people pulling away. And the, my words. The not fact that, and I also love the fact there's that, like, what? the most re- the, mo- the most ridiculous thing in the universe is his greatest as his greatest enemy. It's the super weird, like, and it's just a it's just a clunky. It's like, hey, I'm still from the sixties, <laughs> <laughs> but like the the first episode with the angels in it. Blink, yeah, blink, blink. Yeah, blink. Because when you watch that, and you're like, let's get oh, shit out of me. Oh, hey, here's these statues that are fucking everywhere yeah. in yeah. real life. 
And if you close your eyes too long, they'll uh, send you back in time and kill you. That's a really they'll scary the time energy. That is from a sending you back really out. scary concept. Just the way that they the way that they attack you and the way that they move. You get to go back and hor- live to death. It's horrifying. Yeah, to and me. I was like, I was like, when I first saw that, because, and I think the thing that kind of like really set it in cement was the super Twilight Zone feel when she's walking into that house and she's pulling back shit and it's like. The duck. message to her. Yeah. It's like, duck, because a rock is about to come through the window. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. And then she's, and then he's like, he, she gets that video and he's like, don't blink. Don't even, don't even blink. He's mm-hmm. like, if you blink, you're dead. And I was like, sold. <laughs> that episode is brilliant. I was like, I'm in. That is a really I'm, great I'm episode. Sold for that. And because, and because they're. T. Davis. Mm. That's Moffat. No way. Yeah. Blink, no is, way. Mo- blink is Moffat. Fuck me. Based on his own short story. He oh, really? wrote, yeah, he wrote he wrote a short story called "What I Did on My Summer Vacation" by Sally Sparrow, age seven. Shows what I know, and it was it's like a little like four or five page story that's Sally Sparrow at age seven after getting thrown back in time by the by the angels, and yeah, it's and then he made it, then he made one of the greatest episodes of Doctor Who based on it. So those are those are those are really good. Those are two goodies. What about you, Ben? Uh, I think I'll have to say. Because it just like the end of season one, uh, where you finally find out Bad Wolf and all that, like uh, is Rose. Oh yeah, yeah. That episode to me is just super cool and yeah, totally. The, the two the like two that, part, the two part finale of season yeah. one. Season one was fantastic, uh, and then I think obscure Satan's Pit. Because Ooh, like, Satan's Pit's a goodie. Because I like it was those. just like wait, what? We're dealing with religion. And, and the happening? fact that like the the thing that the thing that I always pitch about Doctor Who to people who don't watch it as like the show can do. Anything. It can mm-hmm. do whatever you want. It can tell any sort of story that you want to. Yes, it can. Um, I see you shaking your head. It told it. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It, to- yeah. it told it. Say it was good. That's <laughs> that's forty. That is forty five minutes of television that that's, was bought and happens. paid for that's by happens. the BBC. That's what happens when your main canon is about a time traveler and space. Well, I'm not into it. All of it. You're gonna be. Though. You're gonna be. You gotta be. You'll get there. Is Doctor could have gone and saved all of the people that were on that ship by going behind the ship as it was throwing them out. Can't they cross were... your own timeline, though. Well, he sure should have done it in the special. special. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, they always been that rule just for the special. <laughs> just for the special. Like, oh, it's okay he here. Said they didn't even look where they were throwing them. See, were like, it's been a while since I've seen that I, episode. I, 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 still, I still like, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up just because he, what he said kind of mentioned it to the fact that in the in the fiftieth anniversary special, everybody else is forcing the doctor to do what he forces everybody to do all the fucking time. Kill people? No. They're like he's like, we've got to kill these people. There's no other way. Motherfucker, there's always a way. You've got oh, a yeah. big fucking time machine <laughs> that is capable of transporting matter. There's ways around this shit. And he's like, no, there's no way. And they're like, yes, there is. He's like well, I guess there is. <laughs> you know what? He does that to everybody. He's like, there's always like somebody saying, there's only one way to look at this. And the doctor's like, no, you can do it another way. And they're like, oh yeah, I guess you're right. But when it comes to the doctor, he's like, there's no other way we can do this. And everybody else in his group is like, yes, there is. You can do this. And he's like, oh yeah, I guess I could. Touche. And then he does that. So uh, so Satan's Pit and... Um, I, for, I forget what the, the general. I, I, for, I forget what the two part season finale is of season. But those are really I great. Episodes. Names, I, those Wolf, those are really great episodes. I think with me, um, definitely the two parter um, human nature and family of blood oh my are God. two of my Ooh. favorite favorite family episodes oh, because awesome. like it's it's everything that you wa- that you want in a Doctor Who story, and plus it tells you everything that you need to know about the character of the Doctor through. A shitty, a shitty human's eyes. Yeah. Like he, I just the the and the the villains in it are really fucking scary. And the 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 interaction between him and Martha, uh, as... least favorite companion, by the way. What? Martha. Oh Joe god. Bone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, that's that's one of our questions that we have. Is we we'll talk companions at the end. Yes. But uh, human Actually, human nature, yeah. human nature, and family of blood, definitely, <laughs> and. The the other one that I that I think I would do is um oh shit Don't no no, no uh, doctor's uh-huh. wife Do, uh, doctor's mm. doctor's wife is yet another one that's it's it's a crystallized perfect Doctor Who story and plus it gives you 
such an understanding of who who, who the doctor is and and how he matters like it's and just uh, honestly just thinking about it makes me want to cry because it's it's every every time i watch that episode i ball i ball like a fucking child and it's yeah it's also it it, it does yeah it does it doesn't help that it it does really help that one of the greatest fiction right one of the greatest fantasy science fiction writers of our generation neil gaiman wrote the piss out of it and his cyber his cyberman episode is incredible i will say i will say though uh when i watched uh the doctor swan as soon as they got to the planet like, I knew it was written by Neil Gaiman. Obviously, it says, you know, by the doctor, the doctor's wife. By, by Neil Gaiman. By Neil credits. Gaiman. But I was sitting there watching it, and I was like, wow, this, whew, this definitely smells it's like It's the Neil most Gaiman. Neil Gaiman-y thing in the world. Like it's people a... walking out in weird costumes. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you get those from the stage version and of like, Coraline? The, <laughs> like, the, and, like, the, the fucking, like, the Idris looks exactly like Amanda Palmer during a concert. <laughs> like, it's just, it's the yeah. Neil gaiman thing in the world. Okay, let's, uh, we're gonna go oh, some, we got, we got some questions. We got a couple of really great questions, as a matter of fact. Good questions. We, we're gonna, we're gonna go, to, we're gonna go to Twitter first. Do we want to do Larry King game? We've, we've got three questions, so we can each do a Larry King. We can uh, each yeah. do a Larry King okay, game. I, I, oh, do you no, want to start no, with Larry? No, you don't want to start. Do you want to go down the line like I'll we did last start, time? Because I, because I sat there thinking about it earlier, and I was like, I don't want to bumble over my own feet. I did a little bit of pre-thinking, but not much. You're coming to the desk with something. I probably, desk I probably something. should have. That's probably I, why I, mine I, are really I'm shitty. Not, I'm not. Um, I'm not a hundred right now. Hmm. I'm not a hundred percent. I've got I've got the the non sequitur because hey. that's where I fucked up the last time. It. Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you all of your face. Whoa! Whoa! Wow! Oh, wow! that got that got heavy really quickly. I don't know. We were that's talking about a lot said. of scenes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Give it to us, buddy. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Were you getting into character? What the fuck? Are you no, doing? I didn't fucking. Okay. <laughs> That was uh, Michael Keaton. Always a pleasure to have him on the show. Uh, his new uh, web comic, "Why God Can I Come Back," the <laughs> Batman saga, um, is available now through YouTube. Uh, like as much as you want. I remember when I was a kid, somebody told me that if I licked the wrapper of a big red stick of gum and stuck it to my forehead, it would burn. I'll be damned if they weren't right. John from Cincinnati. <laughs> Uh, it's, <laughs> you ever actually done that? Yes, and it does it's, burn. It's, it's really... It burns like hell fires. <laughs> Don't because do cinnamon is hotter than shit. <laughs> on skin. No, like on, shits. Hot no, shits. Like, like, like pure, hot taco like shits. Like pure, pure, like the purest cinnamon, like the purest cinnamon flavor that you can get. Flaming hot. That's why I don't buy the cinnamon toothpaste. It just burns the shit out of um, me. This is uh, at Ginseng2, uh, who is actually in our audience tonight. Thank you very much. And? Um, uh, this, Thanks. Oh. Okay. Thanks, babe. Uh, that's <laughs> asked, this is very basic, but who is your favorite companion and why? And why? I have two. I have two answers: modern series and classic series. Because oh, I have, yeah. I have, a, I have a favorite. Donna, Donna, oh, Donna, yes, Donna, Donna Noble. Yes, Donna. Uh, is the best. Uh, Donna Noble is amazing. I love. I did love Martha though, because Martha actually came to the TARDIS with a set of skills <laughs> and not uh, non waterproof mascara. Because um, uh, that's all Rose did. <laughs> Nothing but fucking tarantulas on her face every other fucking episode. Go fuck yourself. And I hated her. Billy fan. Piper. Oh yeah, Billy Piper is amazing. She's a peach. She's got a ter- terrific voice. She's great. But her and her fucking family and her goddamn boyfriend. God, fuck them. I can't even. Uh, it's, like, <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, a classic, uh, classic series, Romana. When uh, Tom Baker traveled with another Time Lord, the Time Lords uh, saddled him with a with a guardian, basically, and she was this hoity-toity, snarky chick that would just constantly fuck with him during adventures. Like the first the first episode uh, that that she's in, she just shows up, and they're they're looking at the TARDIS owner's manual, and she's <laughs> she and it's a giant like leather bound tome and she's he, she's oh. pointing out all the shit that he does wrong in, uh, in she, the piloting oh, yeah, yeah. and he comes over and he's like oh I don't do this and she goes and she goes yeah you don't do this he goes oh okay and he rips the pages out of the book and she, just balls them up and throws yeah, them yeah she's like it, it, it says here that you're not actually allowed to fit it. oh yeah let me see Rip, no. it's so great she was a, she was a great companion what about you guys uh, I do like Donna as well but uh, I'll say I'll say Mickey 
Because he kept getting, he just kept getting shit from the doctor. You like the tin dog? He just yeah, he's the tin dog. Than the tin dog. The tin dog was way better. Yeah, K 9s amazing. I saw the gift set. I say that because he took. I saw the gift. That was great. I saw the gift set from the girl in the fireplace. Where he's, he's girl got, in the fireplace, another great episode. He's got he's got that horse, and she's like, the horse is not staying. He's like, I love you, kid, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's that sums up Mickey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I just, I'll I'll, I'll yeah. try to, I'll try to do. Cause I I'm, hated that. I, I hate Martha. That. Oh my god, I hate. I'm Martha. starting to watch uh, some of the older uh, series, so I'll I'll try to do. I haven't seen much. Mm-hmm. And I don't even, I can't even remember his damn name. Uh, the Scot, the Scotsman. Jamie! Jamie. Yeah, Jamie! Well, Jamie, Jamie McCrimmon's because awesome. Because the very first, uh, the, first ep- the first episode I saw of them, the doctor and the other girl. Zoe. Zoe. Are, the, there's fucking lava just eating itself towards the TARDIS. And they're like, oh my god, it's fascinating. <laughs> like, her and the doctor are both just like, oh look how, look how nice Jamie. that is. <laughs> and Jimmy's like, we gotta get the fuck out of here! <laughs> There's a really, there's a really funny moment in the in Tomb of the Cybermen where they're about to go into the Tomb of the Cybermen, and uh, and it's Zoe, Zoe standing in um, in the middle of the of the Doctor and and Jamie, and the Doctor's like, come come along, Joey, uh, come, come along, Jamie, come along, Zoe, and they start to they start to walk forward, and Jamie and the Doctor start holding hands because they're both trying to grab Zoe's hand to lead her into the into the the tomb, and they they so they walk forward like four paces, and they look at each other, and go what the fuck and they just, <laughs> they just shove each other and then go into the tomb it's so fucking the, cute the, it's so good just him and i when i looked him up because like every time i would watch because they literally just on the on netflix they literally just drop you into the series with no context clues so i'm going who the fuck are these people? <laughs> Google them. and um the fact that jamie was actually from the highlands mm-hmm. and he was the longest running companion yeah uh, him is and the new is one, really? new one. I'll uh, I'll throw you a I'll throw you a curveball, non traditional, Wilfred. Oh, oh god man. damn it, Wilf! I so really beautiful. wish we would have got a the season Knox, of man. him. He was the fucking best. So beautiful, so like the uh, he was literally a child inside of a seventy six year old man's body. He was so <laughs> just great. Him just. The oh, bit, the bit where like the 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 bus of the old people come up and he's just dancing yeah, like outside yeah, the dude. bus with his fucking antlers. Oh god, he was adorable. <laughs> uh, he was the best. He wasn't adorable. Uh, um, uh, uh, our other our other question. Do you do you want to take a do you want to take Larry King for this? Oh one? yeah, I can. Right. I, I don't think I'll do a voice. I don't watch that much Larry King, so I'll just do. Don't, yeah, don't style. deadpan. I, I I did a voice just because oh, I think dude. it managed to voice. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, that was Tom Baker with what's eighty like. <laughs> Just to keep it relevant. Yeah, right? that's good. That's yeah, time. Uh, uh, and uh, have you ever had those days where you just think, "My God, I love cheese." <laughs> I do. Brandon from uh, <laughs> Rex Health uh, I, w- I, w- uh, I want it to be known that his non sequitur is pretty damn close to the real thing. Every non sequitur Larry King has ever done. Um, uh, do the, cheese. Our 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 friends our friends two comic nerds. Uh, pitched us this at Twitter. Uh, for people that don't watch Doctor Who, what's the appeal of it? Uh, the fans kind of turn us away from the show. <laughs> Sell it to us. As, as, uh, as, as, as they do. Yeah. Uh, the This and the Sherlock fandom are two people, are two groups of people that I don't want to be Associated in a dark with. alley with. Like, I, And I love, I really love Doctor Who, but like, son of a bitch, there are some there are some yeah, yeah. raisin cakes out there. Very true. Um, I think... Raisin cakes. Raisin cakes. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a goodie. Uh, Craig Ferguson, uh, who is a giant Doctor Who fan, Craig Ferguson uh, crist- crystallized. Uh, I think the the main. I think the the reason that the show works so well is that um, it's the the triumph of intellect and romance over brute force and cynicism. Agreed. It's yeah. It's 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 such a like he did he did this big opening because he had Matt Smith on it and it, the, the whole song was about, if you get a chance to look it up on YouTube fucking do it because it it's an amazing say, song. I would say it was tremendously funny just to see that shit live or live, but like when they aired it because it's just him. Sitting there grousing, looking at the kitchen camera, he's like, "I was told about three minutes before we went online or before we went on air that we weren't allowed to do this. We had an entire and his like oh dancers, gosh, yeah. his yeah. dancers yeah. are standing like, behind him. Daleks behind him. There's Cybermen behind him. <laughs> there's girls in like 
like tight blue mini dresses that look like the TARDIS. And he's like, I was told that we wouldn't be able to do this. And we spent a whole damn week working <laughs> on this. And now they say, I can't do it. So it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. And then when it gets to the desk, he's like, I'm going to be really, really upset if somebody <laughs> takes what we filmed, the pre recorded, what we did in, in the rehearsal, and deletes that online. I'm like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so upset. But I just think I I think with that just that sentence the triumph of proof of of of, of, of intellect uh, sh- fuck shut up I'm really drunk um, uh, <laughs> of intellect as of, as of, 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 in, of intellect and romance over brute force and cynicism I think is definitely the the best through line of the show that I've ever and you, you can tell any story that mm. you want during yeah, in I that totally agree. And, like dinosaurs on a spaceship <laughs> it was made as an <laughs> educational show yeah like, that's it's what season so, one was. It's yeah. so Oh, great! So, no, yeah, because because they in the original in the original thing they had it where he could go back in time and teach history, yep. and he could go into the future and teach science. Mm-hmm. Like that was what it was awesome. trying to teach kids. Hey, this is what the Aztecs did. They cut out people's hearts and <laughs> they worshipped the rain god. Look at what these chemicals. Uh, are. Um, okay, it's uh, the the last question that we have uh, was sent to us. Um, Via email by Brandon. That's right. Which I th- which I think is amazing. Thank you. Um, the fact that Dedication he, he patted he patted his own show and it's just fucking <laughs> cherry. All right, I'll give uh, I'll give it. Um, that was uh, that was Peter Capaldi uh, pimping his new book. Uh, I have an application that can throw grenades into people's dreams. Uh, <laughs> I often wonder if we're alone in the universe. I start to think if there's someone out there staring at the planet Earth through a telescope and just wondering what it would be like to just really, really get in my asshole. Just, <laughs> just turn me out completely. Uh, Sandra from Sarasota. Go ahead. <laughs> Sandra from Sarasota. Sandra from Sarasota. Yeah, it's, it's with Oscar Wilde like wordplay like that. Uh, there it is. There it is. Uh, um, Brandon asks, "Who is your favorite doctor?" Sent from my iPhone. Uh, I love the I love the fact that it says that. I need to let you know where I'm at. Sent from my iPhone. Oh, um, oh, oh, a little interjection before we can. And they're like, "Excuse the typo." Sent from my iPhone. Does your iPhone not have a fucking i9? <laughs> I don't know what that is. The autocorrect. Yeah, but sometimes oh, it's right annoying on. and gives you terrible I know, but still, I don't fucking send messages, especially when it's a professional level, that have errors in them. Oh, yeah. I have periods, and the next word in the sentence has a capital fucking letter. Thank you. That annoys Thank the you. living shit out of me. <laughs> but you're the, one, you're, the, you're the one that kind of instilled that into me, because when we first started hanging out, I was like, I don't want this guy to think I'm just a retard. So I, like, I started putting <laughs> punctuation in all my texts, commas, periods. Capital letters. An essay. Mini essay. And if I could love him more. But, uh, Eleven. Eleven. Yeah? Eleven's my favorite doctor. I, it's, uh, he's, he's my favorite new doctor, um, just because I, he's, he's an alien. He's weird, he's funny, uh, he can turn on a fucking dime. There, there are moments where he's, like, he's super flippant, and he, and he's enjoying himself, and then, like, he gets dark. Gets real dark, and I, I fucking love that. My favorite classic doctor is, uh, Six. I love six. Yeah, you do. I love six because he because he, he's he, an asshole. Yeah. He's a huge asshole. He's constantly making fun of his companion, insulting everyone, insulting everyone's intelligence around him. Colin Just, Baker, man. Right? Colin Baker, yeah, the the big Jufro wearing a like a <laughs> like he's wearing wearing a huge like like Total weird Major, like Automatic weird Connors. like yeah like weird <laughs> costume. He's such an asshole, and I re I want and I want that costume so fucking bad. I want to wear like if I go. To a convention, I really want to wear that costume. I love that costume. I... See, I would like P- Peter Davidson. Oh like, God, Peter doctor. Davidson's a really yeah. good classic doctor He's too. Classic doctor. I don't know, modern. I guess would be Eccleston. Like if we had nine. A, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah. I mean, just to get off the tenant bandwagon. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Like everybody loves tenant. Who doesn't? You can just move on. I, yeah, I feel like that's. I no, I feel like that's like the go-to. Just everyone's just like. Oh, eh, dude, 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 I mean, dude, I dude. genuinely like. He was great. Like he really got me hooked into Doctor Who. But uh, Smith was my doctor. Like that's when I. It was the Doctor Who happening oh, nice. when I was into Doctor Who. I did not know that. No, yeah, it's, it wasn't very long. Like, in 05, I wasn't like, oh, yeah, Doctor Who. No, back then, I was like, <laughs> fucking beer, let's whatever. <laughs> I, I drink a lot of booze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> drink a lot of booze. Drink a lot of booze, man. Yeah. Drink uh, a lot. What do, you, what do you say, buddy? I, um, like, class, like, I, I kind of cheated on myself because, like, I I took one of the, I took the quiz that you had 
had posted on Facebook. Yeah. It was a quiz? What? Did yeah. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, my vagina's a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Line up, gentlemen. And that's from the Russian judge, the Japanese judge, and the American judge. Across the board. The, Rus- the Russian was a bit stingy, but he eventually turned over in the second round. Um, no, I, uh, I took the test. I was like, I want to find out what doctor I am. So I took the test, and I found out that I was... The second doctor. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. I, and I'd never, I'd never seen the second doctor. So I started watching it. And I was like, I'm in love with this man. Yeah, he's because awesome. Because there was literally like a, a giant, I forgot what it was. Oh, they go out and there's this, whatever, the giant brain with eyeballs. <laughs> and they're like, and he's like, oh my, get out. And he just starts, <laughs> and, and he just starts yeah. high-stepping it away with and his like, big-ass coat. And yeah, part of his costume was this big, furry fucking coat. And then, like, in the middle of the episode, he'd pull out a recorder and just and fucking just play a like, recorder. And that was, like, uh, a huge, yeah. that was, like, one of the hinge pins of the three doctors yeah. is his recorder. That's literally one of the backbones of that whole story is his Have recorder. Because he keeps so he's, like, great. he's like, where's my recorder? And he's just constantly looking for it and he's like badgering uh Omega. He's, <laughs> he's constantly badgering him, trying to get him to snap, and he's just being a child and he's just like hee 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 and he's doing it to figure out um, Omega's weakness. I'll say it. <laughs> Omega. Every time. Omega. 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 That's so goofy. Um but I watched it and I was like, he is adorable because he has like his shirt is nowhere even close to fitting. None of his clothes fit. <laughs> it's like he went to a fucking flea market and just grabbed three sizes too large. And he's like, fuck it. And he wears a he wears this kind. He wears a shirt like this with a bow tie. That's not barely not, straight. It's not. No, it's not even buttoned to the top button <laughs> or remotely close to the top button. Like it's literally like this. And he's just got a bow tie over it. That's so great. He's got giant suspenders. I think it's why I like Matt Smith so much is because he reminds me a lot of. And he carries a Did he Trout. take from him? Yeah, he started watching. He started watching classic uh, classic series, and he got to uh, Tomb of the Cybermen, and he called. Apparently, he called Stephen Moffat. Is like I fucking love this doctor he's like this this is my doctor he's like i'm counting i'm counting two is my favorite doctor so two two's your that's two, your across, uh, the, yeah, board across the board answer board because like every single one of them because i saw like highs and lows and I, you know i did i did watch dollars take manhattan so i can't really throw Oof. all my money into jesus david Tennant, and i've seen and like matt smith was really good i like the fact that he was literally like a buster keaton yeah, uh, he was just Ooh, super. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I think it's um, Neil Gaiman described him as all knees and elbows. Like he's exactly. he's a human. He's a human being made of knees and elbows. He's 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 the scarecrow right after you get him off the post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys, we're gonna wrap this up. Brandon, thank you so fucking no much problem, for being man. on the show, hey, man. Dude. And by was, the way, that was super awkward. Rocky, really, Brandon, nice to meet you. Buddy. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh, fuck me! No, 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 no. Oh my god! Oh, it's special. It's oh, on the air now. Oh, it's, it's under glass. It's like it's, 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 um, we really appreciate all of you coming out. Uh, uh, Whovians, not Whovians. Thank you very much for listening to us bullshit and talking about semen for forty minutes. Yes. Uh, our <laughs> next, semen's our fine. next episode is going to be December eighteenth. So go ahead and mark your calendars. You can find us on Twitter at Alan Moore's Porch, uh, and uh, we're both. All three of us are on Facebook, so you can add us on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Please, dear God, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like our ep- like our episodes. Share <laughs> share our episodes. Leave a shitball comment. <laughs> Somebody uh, yeah, I, I, I fucking shit. can't wait uh, you can go to YouTube search Alan Moore's porch uh, I am Justin Partridge for my co-host Rocky Turner thank you all for coming Geronimo oh, oh I forgot my catchphrases <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>